a different location each week. And what they, what they would do is they would film in a city, and then within a 50 mile radius, they would travel outside of the city and maybe shoot in this small town, and that small town. So they would do maybe two to three shows in a specific locale, and then move on. Now, in Philadelphia, they did two shows, The Thin White Line, which is a very good show in the second season, and then The Cat Jumped Over the Moon, which was about gang violence. Thin White Line was about LSD, a very dramatic show, where uh, Todd is, is in, uh, given LSD at a party and becomes a, a maniac, roaming the streets of Philadelphia, and, and Buzz and the police are trying to find him before he uh, becomes a uh, suicidal. Uh, those two were done here, and then they, I don't know if it was before or after, for example, then they did a show called Burning for Burning with Inger Stevens and Viola Bondi in, uh, and Pat Hingle, uh, a very good show by the way, in uh, Boiling Springs, Pennsylvania. And of course they did a show with Lee Marvin in uh, Pittsburgh area called Mon Petit Chou, which is French, I believe, for My Little Cabbage. Wonderful titles. Most of the scripts were written by Sterling Sullivan. Some were written by uh, Larry Marcus and Howard Rodman, who was also the story supervisor, who wrote a lot of episodes of Naked City, and Will Lauren. And they predominantly wrote most of the shows, uh, with, of course, Sterling Sullivan uh, writing the majority. Um, so we have a show about two young men who are concerned and caring people. And I think what it did is it kind of opened up a lot of the people watching in the 1960s because it was basically a Cold War generation and very, people were very insular and self-involved. And I think this show kind of allowed people to step outside of themselves and, and empathize and care about other people. I know it affected me, uh, George Maharis' character. And I think George was dynamic in the role of Buzz Warwick. I don't think there was anybody on series TV that was better in, in a role than he was there were other actors, I think, that were equally dynamic. Uh, James Arness as Matt Dillon in Gunsmoke, uh, David Jansen in The Fugitive. He had that haunted quality that Richard Kimball uh, possessed. Uh, um, E.G. Marshall in The Defenders. Uh, you can pick different actors that were really larger than life in their roles. But I think George Maris as Buzz Mordark was, um, he was so different. He was volatile, he was intense, he was charming. He was uh, um, so many different things. And he was, first and foremost, a sensitive, caring person, which you keep coming back to. As was uh, Mark, Marty Miller's character, Todd. Uh, and again, the, con the, the success of the show was the fact that it was filmed against the backdrop of America, the fact that they were dimensional characters, very appealing, and the fact that there was such a contrast between them. And sometimes they were at odds. In the first season in a show called Look Like a Motherless Child with Sylvia Sidney, they have a knockdown, drag out fight. Uh, Buzz leaves the road because of the way Todd handles a runaway orphan. And they part company and he attaches himself to this older woman who uh, lost her son as, uh, uh, when he was young and she had to give him away. And Todd sees it's an unhealthy situation and he uh, exposes, uh, I wouldn't say exposes, but well, he, he, he he reveals what the woman's doing for a living. She's shilling at a bar with other women. In. And she's so humiliated at being found out. And Buzz is so infuriated that Todd would do this that he tells him, outside. And they step outside and, and they have a knockdown drag out fight. So even though there was a strong bond between them, you had conflict. Of course, off, off camera, they were totally different individuals. But I think that was one of the strengths of the show, and that they were so different, and that there was such a contrast. One dark, one light, one intense and ball, one um, um, easy going and, and compatible, and, and uh, you know, as an actor, Marty goes, all right, let's get it done. You know, he had been in, in movies since he was a kid, and George was more, uh, he was from the actor's studio, he was more questioning and more challenging. So right away you get a semblance of the two individuals. So uh, when George left the series in the middle of the third year due to an illness, and he was replaced, and I don't use the word replaced in the book, I don't think, um, in the text, because you couldn't replace him. The, the next actor that came along, Glenn Corbett, was a handsome guy, and a bit rugged looking, and, and, uh, and 
very friendly with Marty. They were good friends. But there was a sameness. And I think that's what eventually doomed the show, that the contrast between the two characters and George and Marty was gone. And you had uh, Glenn Corbett, who was a competent actor, but he, his on-screen persona was too much like Marty's. So all of a sudden, you had two Todd Styles. Even though his character was this ex-Green Beret that suffered from post-Vietnam uh, you know, Syndrome, which is something that was kind of a new concept at the time. But again, Sterling Self and came up with something very imaginative. They tried to get Burt Reynolds to play it. He was playing a, a character named Quint Asper in Gunsmoke, who was a, 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 guns, a blacksmith. He wouldn't do it. He said, I'm not someone's replacement. Uh, Burt Leonard tried like the Dickens to get uh, Burt Reynolds. He was very close to the character of Lynn Case that Sterling Self had written. But it, it didn't work. So then they looked in their own backyard and they found a contract player named Glenn Corbett, who we've just talked about, that had done some movies and some TV shows. And he was cast as Lynn Case. Uh, the show held up for the remainder of the third season. There were some very good scripts. And people were interested in the new character. Hmm, what's he like? But then uh, the fourth season began to slip. And they filmed 23 episodes in the fourth season and it went off the air. Um, in January, uh, they ended their first run episodes, or March, I'm sorry, with a two-parter, where uh, Todd Stiles gets married to a, a character played by Barb Reed. And, uh, and Link Case returns to Texas. And then from uh, the end of March to September, they aired reruns of the first three seasons with George and Marty, and then they went off the air in uh, September. I should tell you that, uh, <clears throat> that George Maharis left the show because he had hepatitis. He was filming a show called Even Stones Have Eyes, where he's blinded, and he had to go into a lake. Now, uh, when you go into a lake and they're shooting in the cold weather, you wear what's known in business as a wetsuit put your wardrobe over the wetsuit. The problem was that he, his clothes didn't fit over the wetsuit and they had to match the previous shot. So George went into a lake to save the actress in the show, Barbara Barry, who was also blind. Uh, and uh, he got very sick. And it was a grueling shoot. About, I guess a month later, he was doing a show called There I Am, There I Always Am in Catalina with Joanna Moore. And it was basically a two character drama. Because Marty's character wasn't in it very much. And he, she gets stuck in a rock. The tide's coming in. She's going to drown. And he runs all over the island trying to find somebody to save her. It's a very dramatic episode, I, I think. There I am, there I always am. He, near the end of the second season. And he was very ill. And you know, here he is jumping in and out of the water. And it's, I don't know when they filmed in February, March. And uh, at one point, you know, his eyes were, were white. Pupils and uh, everybody said, Ah, oh, George, you look fine, you're, you're okay. He went to the doctor and he said, You have hepatitis. So, what happened is he was hospitalized for three weeks. Bert Leonard came to see him in the hospital and he said, George, I don't think CBS is going to renew us if you don't come back. And uh, he said, But if you do come back, you know, we'll take care of you. You work three, four hours a day. Well, he came back for the third year. He was in the hospital for three weeks. And they started the third season. It was great. They had a great show in Oregon called One Tiger to a Hill with David Jansen. Very well done. They did a comedy with Boris Karloff and Peter Laurie and Lon Chaney in Chicago called Lizard Lakes and uh, Owl's Wing. And they did a show with, uh, also in Chicago, uh, called Man Out of Time, uh, Voice at the End of the Line. They did some really good shows. but. Uh, Buzz Murdoch was heavily involved in the storyline. So George worked 80 hours, 70 hours, 60 hours. There was no such thing as working three or four hours a day. Anyway.